iPhone X's main camera comes with a dual camera setup, the wide angle lens with an aperture of f1.8 and a telephoto lens with an aperture of f2.4. The front camera comes with a 7 megapixel with an aperture of f2.2. This is the same setup you will find in the iPhone 8 Plus with few differences. The main cameras, both the wide angle and the telephoto lens, both have optical image stabilization enabled in the iPhone 10, whereas in the 8 Plus, only the wide angle comes with the optical image stabilization. And the front camera in the iPhone 10 uses all of those new sensors that are available with its true depth technology for Face ID, and it also uses it for bringing the other new features in the iPhone 10's front camera. Let's start with the basic thing, launching your camera app in the iPhone 10. There are three ways to launch your camera app in the iPhone 10. The first one is the obvious choice which is to go and tap on the camera app icon in your home screen and that will launch the camera app. The second is to launch your camera app from the control center. So now if you swipe on the top right in your iPhone 10, that will launch the control center and there you will find the camera icon and just tap on it to open the camera. Third, you can launch the camera app from your lock screen. So in your lock screen, just swipe left to open up the camera app or you can just long press the camera icon on the bottom right in your lock screen to open the camera as well. Now at any given point when you have launched the camera from the lock screen, if you want to go back to your lock screen, just swipe up from the bottom and that will take you back to the lock screen from the camera app. Remember that you can also use 3D touch gestures to launch certain shortcuts within the camera app. So for example, in the camera app icon in your home screen, you can long press to bring up the 3D touch shortcuts. So you can directly jump to a specific mode in your camera app. And same goes with the control center as well. But you don't have the 3D touch gestures in the lock screen. So that's something that you should remember that the 3D touch gestures are available in the home screen and in the control center. So once you're in the camera app, if you want to switch between the front and the rear camera, you can always do that by pressing the switch camera button on the bottom right. To switch between the different camera modes, all you have to do is just swipe left or right and that will switch between the different camera modes available. At the top, you will find some of the basic settings such as the flash, live photo mode, timer and filters. You can turn on and off those settings appropriately by tapping on each of those buttons. Now if you want to apply live filters to your shot, you can do that by either tapping the live filter button on the top right or just swiping up in your viewfinder that is your camera app that will bring up the filters and then swipe left and right to switch between the filters. The iPhone 10 supports optical zoom up to 2x and digital zoom up to 10x. So if you want to use the optical zoom, just tap on the 1x button you find in your camera app viewfinder and that will switch to the optical zoom that uses a telephoto lens. Now you can still long press on that 1x button and keep dragging left or right to increase or decrease the zoom and that will actually then switch between the wide angle and the telephoto camera depending on whether it's using the optical zoom or whether it's using the digital zoom. To take a picture of course you can always tap the shutter button but you can also use the volume buttons both the volume up and volume down to take a shot. And that's very useful if you're using your iPhone 10 in one-handed mode or you just want to take a photo in a very different angle and you could use the volume buttons to just take the photo rather than trying to go and press the shutter button. Now most of the time point and shoot works great but at times you might need to focus on a specific area or a specific subject to get the most out of the shot. So to focus on an object or the area just tap on the desired area in the viewfinder that is in your camera app and iPhone 10 will focus on that object. Now if you want to adjust the exposure of your shot just move the sundial up and down and that will increase or decrease the exposure for your shot. Now if you want to lock both the focus area as well as the exposure level, just tap and hold for a few seconds in the viewfinder on the desired area and that will then lock the exposure and focus for that particular area. 
Coming to the camera modes. Now there are several camera modes available if you notice and you can switch between them just by swiping left or right one by one. Now some of the key camera modes are the portrait mode, the slow motion mode and the panorama mode which actually lets you take some great shots with the iPhone 10. And don't forget about the time lapse mode as well which you can basically take a shot for a period of time that will then give you a time lapse video. The dual camera setup in the iPhone 10 allows you to take some awesome portrait shots. Now what this means is it puts the focus on the nearby object and adds a blur background effect. To take a portrait shot, all you have to do is open the camera app, swipe right to switch to the portrait mode and then you can focus on any object that will give you a preview of what it would look like and then you can take a shot. Apple has added portrait mode lighting effects with the updated internals and camera sensors in the iPhone 10. With these lighting effects, you can switch between different modes, starting with the natural light, which is what you get with the normal portrait mode. And then you got the studio light, contour light, stage light, and stage light mono. One thing to remember is that the portrait mode lighting effects are still in beta, so there might be some issues with it, but when it works, it works great. Now, one other thing added to the iPhone 10 and basically iOS 11 is that now you can edit these portrait mode shots. So to edit the photo and change the portrait lighting effects, just open the photos app, choose your photo that was taken in the portrait mode and then tap edit. And now you will be able to either remove the blur completely by tapping on the portrait mode, or you can switch between different lighting effects based on your needs. With the help of this true depth sensors, iPhone 10 is able to bring the same portrait mode and the portrait mode lighting effects to your friend camera. So now you can actually take a portrait mode selfie and also apply those lighting effects that we just saw before using the rear camera. Now this is also in beta, so there might be some issues, but when it works, it actually works great. The new Animoji feature uses the true depth technology in the friend camera. So you can use many characters like this poop emoji as well to create your animojis. Once you create them, then you can easily share it with your friends and family. So just go into the messages app, tap the app store icon at the bottom and then just tap on that monkey face. That will give you the ability to select the characters you want. Select a character and then press the record button and speak. So that will then scan your facial expressions and basically mimic that using the character. Now once you have done, stop the recording and just tap send to send to your friends. The animojis are pretty cool and pretty fun, but I'm not sure how useful they are, but it actually lets Apple to show the true depth technology that they have incorporated in the iPhone X's friend camera. So there's one mode that's not available in the camera modes that you swipe left or right, but actually is available on the top in the basic settings, that is the live photo mode. So you can enable this live photo mode by tapping on the live icon on the top, which is next to the flash. So once you enable that, live photos can capture live moments of your shot, that is 1.5 seconds to be precise before and after you take a shot. You can then use the 3D touch gesture to basically view the live moment that also has sound rather than just seeing a still photo. Now you also get the ability to add some live photo effects to this live moment. With iOS 11, you can now add some effects to your live photos. So to add these effects to your live photo, go to your photos app, tap on the live photo you want to edit and then swipe up to reveal all of the effects available. Now, if you also notice, those effects actually show a preview of how that live photo will look. So you can choose between the loop, bounce or the long exposure option. Now, the other thing you can do is you can always edit the live photos so you can manipulate some of the settings like you can trim the length or you can select a key photo that you want to show up in the photos app. Now to select the key photo, all you have to do is just tap the keyframe to select your key photo. You can also mute the sound in your live photo by tapping on the sound button on the top left so you don't now have a sound in your live photo, rather just the video. Now if you want to completely remove this live moment and just get the still photo, you can do that by tapping the live button on the top. 
So that's all good. Now, if you want to access the settings and change some of the things that you want to see in the camera app, then you would have to go to the camera settings, which is available in your settings app. So just go to your home screen, tap on the settings button, and then scroll down to the camera. And then there you will find the various settings available for your camera app. Now the video format can go up to 4K 60 frames per second. But one thing to note here is that the 4K 60 frames per second requires a new file format that Apple uses with iOS 11. The same goes with the slow motion video as well. The 1080p 240 frames per second requires a new file format that is available with the iOS 11. Especially with the slow motion option that is 1080p 240 frames per second, you can take some great slow motion videos with your iPhone 10. So with the iOS 11, Apple uses a new file format called high efficiency instead of the compatible format that is a JPEG to store your videos and still photos. So if you want to switch to the high efficiency mode, make sure that you also have updated your Mac OS to High Sierra or have a compatible drivers or softwares in your Windows system to support and load these high efficiency format. Now, if you're not clear, then choose the most compatible so that makes sure that you can move these files around with different systems. So this is where I was telling before, if you're using 4K 60 frames per second or the slow motion 1080p at 240 frames per second, it will use the high efficiency mode regardless of what setting you choose here. So that's something to keep in mind, especially when you're taking those videos. One other thing you will find here is that the HDR is now managed automatically for you and you will not find the ability to turn on and off the HDR in the camera app. However, if you want to control this in your camera app, just toggle this auto HDR on and off, which will then give you the ability to turn on and off the HDR in the camera app. There's no doubt iPhone 10 cameras are one of the best smartphone cameras available right now, along with other top end smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. But if you want to take control of the camera and manipulate many of the settings that you would find in a DSLR, the iPhone 10 camera app doesn't have those settings. And for a good reason, iPhone has always kept it really simple so everyone can use it. Now, if you do want to control the settings, you can download a lot of apps from the App Store and use it that gives you the ability to manipulate, say, for example, the individual ISO settings, the exposure settings, the manual focus or the autofocus, and also whether to capture images in RAW format or the normal JPEG or the high efficiency format. If you do want to try out these apps, make sure you go to App Store under the photo and video category and there you'll find tons of apps to help you take much better shots than the iPhone's default camera app. If you have an iPhone 10, then it's time to get out and capture the world. While you do that, hit the subscribe button for more tips and tricks videos for the latest smartphones. Until next time, bye.